wake up. I need your help. No, oh, I'm sleeping. Let me sleep. Meet me in the vet clinic. I'm going to shoot your father. What? Mom, what are we doing down here? I want you to take a photo of your father and I. We haven't had a new one since the day you died. Has it been that long? We're long overdue. Sit down, dear. I'll get your father. That's not dad. That's a two-dimensional cardboard cutout. I spent 30 years with the man. Believe me, this'll do. He always made me feel short. Let's see. How's that? He looks a little stiff. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that. Uh, let's try this. What do you think? I think you're doing what you always did. You're just chipping away at him, trying to make him into somebody else. There's not a lot of room here for interpretation, Sid. Did you ever think that you might have been wrong about Dad? That there may be more to him than you ever knew? You mean that all those years I was trying to make him into the man I wanted him to be. But I never saw the real Jim? The exciting, sexy, adventurous one? Nah, let's just do a headshot. Mom! Smile. How are things going at the clinic now that uh, Heather's gone? Any better? Well, luckily, things are light right now. Great. This Monica's in town. I thought that was next week. Well, she got back from Everest early and thought she'd get a jump start. Said, I don't know. Who's Monica? Monica Lang. She's a friend of mine from L.A. I told you about her. She's a photojournalist. Oh, yeah. Is she the one that was covering the refugees in Kosovo? That's the one. Wow. What does she want with Dad? She's doing a series of photo essays on the American worker. The city DA, country doctor, and dad has agreed to be the family vet. As I recall, I agreed to be the backup in the event she couldn't find a suitable subject. Well, she couldn't, so you're it. Dad, what's the big deal? You should be flattered. Oh, you know how I feel about all that stuff. Stranger in the clinic taking photos. Could upset my patients. Dad, your patients drink out of the toilet. It's all set. I'm having lunch with her today. You can join us there. If you're still uncomfortable, you can back out gracefully. Promise? I'll help you come up with an excuse. Room two, Morris Foley, he's 88. Complaining of headaches and heart palpitations, blood pressure through the roof, and I think he pinched my butt. At 88? God bless him. Hello, Mr. Foley. I'm Dr. Hansen. Hello. So when did the headaches and palpitations start? About a week ago. Were they brought on by anything in particular? A change in diet or increased activity? I was making whoopee count? Well, if you're making more whoopee than usual. I've done it more in the past month than in the 1970s and 80s combined. Really? I got a new girlfriend, Kim. She can't keep her hands off me. Uh-huh. Of course, my son says that she's only after my dry cleaning business. And what do you say? Thank God I got a dry cleaning business. <laughs> All right, let's take your blood pressure one more time here. So have you taken blood pressure medication before? For a while, it made me feel bad. Hopefully we can find one that doesn't. Now, I'm gonna have Izzy set you up for an EKG right away, and then I need you to come back tomorrow. Now, until we find the proper medication for you, you're at high risk for a stroke or possibly a heart attack. So you need to take it easy. Well, that'll be hard with Kim around. You know, she gets me awfully frisky. Let's see what you can do. 
All right. I'll send Izzy right in. <sighs> Izzy, I need you to set up an EKG for Mr. Foley. I'm going to get his medication. He shouldn't leave here until his blood pressure comes down. Oh. I'll pass that on to his chauffeur. And who would that be? Miss September over there. Oh, my. What can I get for you today? Whatever's on tap. Can you put on channel four? Sure. Get down on your luck. This is what you want? Game show? Yeah. Down on your luck. Haven't you seen it? I have better ways of wasting my time. Man, I love this show. They get losers to come on and tell pathetic stories about why they need money. Then they ask them questions about famous losers. They're so bad, it's good. You guys are really into this, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, they're in Providence the next couple weeks. Well, I'm thinking about going down an audition. I'm, as always, Chuck Dance. Welcome, please, our first contestant, Mr. Ed Miller. There you go. Shh. This is the best part. Lewis is talking. So, Ed, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Well, Chuck, I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania, and I want to say hi to my mother. Sid? Hey. Hi. Oh, it's good to see you. Yeah, we miss you out in California. Oh, as if you're ever there anymore. Yeah, that's true, unfortunately. I just spent the last month in the Russian Republics. It would be so nice to be out of the line of fire for a while. I bet. So where are you staying while you're here? Do you remember Gunter Howell from yoga class? The sculptor. Wait a minute. He did those uh, abstract human figures out of packing material? Right. Yeah. <laughs> he has a loft down near RISD, so I'm subletting. Oh, it's so nice to have you here. Yeah. You know, maybe we could start working out together again. You must know all the hot spots by now. Uh, I hate to admit it, but I haven't been on a treadmill since I left California. Unless, of course, you count the clinic. Oh, uh, here comes my father. I, I should warn you, he's not completely comfortable with being photographed. What, a stolen spirit kind of thing? Uh, no, more like a center of attention kind of thing. Mm. Hey, Dad. Hi, sweetie. How are you doing? Good. Well, this is Monica Lang. Hello. Monica, my father. Hi, it's such a pleasure to finally meet you. Thank you. Actually, I was hoping I might get your help on a project I've been working on. What's that? Well, before I left the country, I, I did a lot of research and some shooting at some puppy mills. Really? That's actually one of Dad's pet causes. And no pun intended. Well, I remember you telling me that, and it started me thinking about this project. Anyway, I was hoping that you might help me sort through some of these photos. I, I don't want to do just a standard expose. I would really love to put these people out of business for good. Well, if that's what you want to do, I'm your man. year did Millie Vanilli win the Grammy Award? Was it A, 1990, B, 1989, or C, 1991? 1989. I'm gonna say 1991. Well, I'm sorry, Ed. The correct answer is 1989. We've got a oh, you knew that? Game. But I'm not proud of it. Mr. Ed Miller, big hand. Thank you. Welcome, please, our next contestant, Mr. Don Farber. Go right away to your first question. Which university was immortalized in the Steely Dan song Deacon Blues for having the most losses of any college football team? Was it A, Georgia Tech, B, University of South Carolina, or C, Wake Forest? They call Alabama the Crimson Tide. Call me Deacon Blue. It's Wake Forest, you goofball. I believe it's Wake Forest. You are correct, Don Farber. You rock at this man. You should go down there and audition with me. Oh, Larry, couldn't pay me enough to humiliate myself like that. Just can't get those photos out of my mind. How do you keep from putting down the camera and getting involved? If I put the camera down, I might miss the moment. See, the best way for me to help those animals is to get them on the cover of Newsweek. I never thought of that. I hate to break this up, but I really should get going. Dad, what about you? Actually, I have a couple more minutes. Oh. All right, uh, Monica, I'll talk to you later. And uh, Dad, I'll see you at home. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Look, Dr. Hansen, I need to thank you in advance for allowing me into your professional life. You should know I don't take this for granted. I appreciate that. And if we're going to be working together, it's Jim. OK. Hey, 
Hey, Joe. Were you serious about auditioning for that game show? Oh, yeah. I already called for information. So what do you have to do? You fill out an application and come up with a good hard luck story. That should be tough, huh? Yeah. They're seeing people through the end of this week. Here's the number if you're interested. May the biggest loser win. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Hey, Joni, I'm sorry I'm late for dinner. Oh, don't worry about it. Dad's still down in the clinic with Monica. Monica's there? Yeah. They came back together from lunch. Guess it went OK. Guess so. Did you get a chance to meet her? Not yet. I'm telling you, you won't well, are... OK. Hey, Sid. Hi. Oh, you must be Joni. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. We were just arguing about Indian, Indian food. Your father has been touting um, Bombay, Bombay Club. Club. Monica insists that there is a place in London that makes the world's best samosas. OK. There's one way to settle this. Are you free for dinner? Unless you don't think your samosas can stand the challenge. Bombay Club, here we come. <laughs> you want to join us, girls? Uh, I would have to corral a babysitter. What about you, Sid? Well, I'd love to shower and change first. <laughs> well, let's not make a big deal out of it. We'll bring something back. Uh, OK. See you tomorrow. Nice meeting you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Is it my imagination, or were we just dumped? Don't go there. Please. Hey, guys. You seen Dad around? They need to borrow one of his old polyester shirts. Why, are you making a new fashion statement? Well, believe it or not, I have an interview for Down on Your Luck. That game show? How humiliating. Yeah, talk to me after I've won 100 grand. Uh. So where's Dad? He's not in the clinic. Oh, he had an emergency house call this morning, and then he's going to drop by and pick up Monica. Who's Monica? Friend of Sid's. She's a photojournalist doing a piece on Dad. How'd you ever get him to agree to that? Oh, she dragged him kicking and screaming to have a look at Monica. Really? Is this something I should check out? Don't be disgusting. Besides, Dad might look at it as poaching. Tony, yeah, it was almost midnight before they came home from dinner. And Dad was awake? And humming. Man, this does sound serious. It's not. Dad is happy to be working with an interesting, intelligent woman. Who happens to be in her mid-30s. Well, I'd love to see how this turns out, but I got a game show to make. Oh, tell Dad I raided his closet. <laughs> Joni, you don't really think no, something. No, no, no. But believe me, if I get any hardcore evidence, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Only kidding. <laughs> to stay on the table a little bit longer. That a girl. OK, that a girl. Now just lift your leg a little higher. That's good. OK. Hi, Joni. Oh, wow. Hi, Monica. Finished already? No, your dad's taking me to Miss Freeman's class to uh, document Take Care of Your Pet Day. Oh, pretty <laughs> exciting stuff. I should get some good shots. Wow, I really envy you. An amazing lifestyle. You know, always on the go. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I imagine it must be pretty hard, though, to, like, maintain a relationship, huh? Yeah, that does get tough. But, um, you know, where there's a will. Hi, Joni. Hi, Dad. Something? Yeah, I just wanted to, um, see if you wanted some coffee for the road trip. Oh, I think we're fine, aren't we, Monica? Couldn't be finer. I could see that. Have a nice day. Thanks. Cleaning the dog's ear with the cotton ball, going around and around the outside. Nothing goes inside. And then, in order to do the other ear, you get another cotton ball, dip it in the solution. <gasps> Salty! And oh, no. Around Dr. Around. Hansen! Marcus, hold on to him, please. This poor guy's having a seizure. Is he gonna be okay? Okay, Jesse, I need you to hold onto his leg. Stay away from his teeth. Just hold onto his leg. That a girl. Hang on. That's the way. You're doing fine. Just hang on to his leg, Jesse. I'm trying. I can't. Jesse, please. I need some help holding him still, honey, so I can give him this injection. OK, this should do it. Thanks. 
There we go. I see, Salty's gonna be just fine. How long has it been since he's had a seizure? Not since first grade. Mm -hmm. A little scary, huh? You didn't do anything wrong, sweetie. What we'll do is call your mom and have her take Salty to the vet. Here, can you hold him now? You were great with them. Well, I'm just glad we could help Jesse's dog. Thanks for jumping in. Well, I had to. Thanks. Oh, I haven't been there in a while. What's that? The baked onion. It's a jazz club in the jewelry district. Oh, no, 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 no. You throw it away. I love jazz. You're kidding. Mel Torme, the Duke, Ella? You don't believe me, do you? What's your favorite Ella recording? Taking a Chance on Love, live at Carnegie Hall, 1973. You know your jazz. I don't remember the last time I went to a club, though. Yeah, me neither. Pick me up at 8. OK. Mr. Foley, no more heart palpitations, no more headaches, your blood pressure's doing better. What's the problem? Izzy says you won't tell her what's wrong. Yeah, keep the stuff. It's no damn good. If it's alleviating your symptoms, it's keeping your blood pressure down. That ain't the only thing it's keeping down, believe you me. What? The old soldier, he won't salute. Well, that is a side effect. Did you have the same problem with your old medication? Yeah, but the station pump didn't see much action. My wife's been dead for almost 20 years. But now I got a young honey with lots of sass. I want to enjoy her. Then change your medication. Another one may not have the same effect on you. Just ask your girlfriend to be patient. I don't want a nursemaid. I'm not 90 years old, for God's sake. Mr. Foley, wait a second. Look, if you don't take your blood pressure medication, you will probably end up in the hospital. And then you really won't be having any sex. Damn it. She wants me to take the damn pills. What a pain in the neck. Come on, now. It's for your own good. Sid. Hey, what are you doing here? I have been trying to reach you all day. I got your message about dinner tonight. Are, are we still on for Thai food? I made plans with your dad. We're going somewhere down in the jewelry district. Anyway, how about tomorrow night? I'd have to check my schedule. I'm not sure. Will you call me? Yes, I'll call you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Get ready and waiting. Hi, I'm Andy Paulson. I'm the talent coordinator. If you can call our guest talent. It's nice to meet you, Andy. I love this show. I know I'll make a great contestant. Well, then lose the killer smile. I'm looking for an underdog. It's better. I read your story. It's pathetic. Thanks. But it's not exceptional. Not to be cool, but a lot of people have dead mothers. I'm looking for a contestant who can string his failures together like a Greek tragedy. I can do that. I'm way more pathetic than you think. So are half the guys in the waiting room. Yeah, but I had a vision. I mean, I started my own company in my garage. Within three years, I was taking vacations in Maui, and I was driving a Porsche. Oh, yeah? What happened? Well, I gave it up for a figure skater from Odessa. She was uh, unbelievable, but her family was like in the Russian mafia. I went too far, didn't I? Well, I could take out the part about the girl. We don't take liars on the show. Come on, I was only bending the truth a little, you know, for the greater good. Define greater good. Any major life improvement where nobody gets hurt? Tell you what. Come back here tomorrow morning at 10.30, and I'm going to introduce you to Chuck Chance, our fearless leader. Cool. But stop by here first, because I want to give you the full scoop on Chuck. You're going to need it. Thanks, Annie. You're totally awesome. There's nothing personal about this, Rob. Remember the name of the show, Down on Your Luck? I'm looking for losers. Well, check the dictionary, and you'll find my picture and lose the outfit. I said losers, not geeks. Right. Wow. Did you see that? See what? 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 Dad, on his way out. Yeah, so? Well, I'm surprised you recognized him. He was in a turtleneck, for God's <laughs> sake. Turtleneck. Oh, I can't believe it. He is so busted. Oh, come on, Joni. Uh, 
There is no denying it. The man is definitely on a date. Oh, that is a huge leap. I mean, they're going to the jewelry district. Exactly. Dad's old favorite jazz club. Well, how do you know that? He called information for the phone number. But that doesn't prove anything. And if it did, what would you do about it? Tell me you're not considering it. Tell me you're not the slightest bit interested, Miss Impartial Swiss Delegate. But, well, wait a minute, Joni. I can't believe we're doing this. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Just remember, this is in Dad's best interest. How's that? A broken heart at his age? It could spell the end. Mom hated this place. It's really kind of cool. And suspiciously romantic. Joni, I don't see them anywhere. Let's just go. Two o'clock, across the bar. This is creepy. We are officially spying on them now. Then don't look. Besides, they're not doing anything. It's just like I said, perfectly innocent. Did you just see that? What? She just touched his arm. So? Brush up on your body language, Sid. That's the first sign of growing intimacy. They're getting up to leave. Come on, let's go before they see us. No, they're not headed this oh, way. Don't tell me anymore. Oh my god, they're going to the dance floor. Huh? I don't believe it. Believe it. You're just in time. For what? The family slideshow. Oh, great. Oh, we were always so cute when we were young. Who are these people? Your father's new family. Uh, aren't we getting a little ahead of ourselves? You're right, dear. Let's start at the beginning and work our way into this nightmare. They fall in love. They get hitched. Oh, you deliver your new baby sister. Ew. Ew. Oh, this one's my favorite. Jim and Monica surfing in Hawaii. Oh, my hell, he looks like a demented beach boy. All right, that's enough. I get the point. Sorry, dear. But I think it's important that you see this through to its inevitable conclusion. When Monica leaves him. Poor dad. And takes the house. Ouch. I'm telling you, Sid, you should nip this in the bud. Otherwise, the show's over. Oh, I'm so glad you're finally awake so we can talk about last night. All right, it is obvious that the time to act is now before Dad gets too invested in Monica. How much coffee did you have to drink this morning? I don't know, I lost track. But if you're making more, I'll have some. Mm -hmm. OK, here's the plan. As soon as he comes in for breakfast, we sit him down. We tell him we think he's making a humongous mistake with Monica. Based on what? Based on that Fred and Ginger routine last night at the jazz club. First of all, we're not supposed to know about that. And second of all, how do we know for sure that it's a huge mistake? Oh, please. Do you really think a woman that photographs the Bushman of Kalahari one week and, and Bruce Springsteen the next is going to give it all up for Shay Hansen? I don't think so, Sid. We have got to be cruel to be kind. I think I'm just going to sit him down and tell him I think he's a complete lunatic for even imagining that Monica's interested in him. Will you just let me handle this? Why? Because you're so much more articulate than I am? Because I won't use the word lunatic. Oh. Morning, girls. Hello. Morning. That's Monica. I'm off. What? Do you want me to wrestle him down to the ground? I'll talk to him tonight. Fine. I'm going to go reorganize my closet. Hello. Hey, Izzy. Mr. Foley? When? All right, all right. I'll be right there.
Chuck upstairs in his dressing room. Compliment him as much as possible. Try to work some of your sob story into the conversation. And whatever you do, don't show fear. Why would I be afraid of a game show host? It's open. Where's my bagel? I don't know. I'm Robbie Hanson. Oh, Danny sent me here to meet you. You're a contestant? That's right. Why don't they just shoot me right now? Come on, come on, let's hear it. What? Your pathetic tale of woe. Whoa. Look at you. You're young, mildly handsome, in an offbeat sort of way. You got your whole life ahead of you. You don't know the first thing about disappointment, struggle, tragedy? I played happy in Death of a Salesman. And here I am, buried in some freaking game show. Yeah, but the show's a hit. And, you know, quiz shows are huge. Yeah, until the next wave of televised brain death washes in. And then where the hell am I? I... Pigeonhole, with a joke name and some cheap Italian wardrobe. Light years from Arthur Miller. Unless, of course, he's writing a play about some guy who's selling a game show. What do you think the chances are of that? Who's Arthur Miller? Oh, get out of here. You depress me. But Chuck Chance isn't your real name. Ow! When's the last time you took your medication, Mr. Foley? All right. Does Kim know why you passed out? Look, Doctor, she could get lots of younger men. If I can't keep her happy, she won't stick around. Did it ever occur to you that she may actually care about you? I guess she does. Then she should know what she's in for if you don't start taking your medication. You have a big decision to make, Mr. Foley. You better make it soon. Hey. Where'd you get to? I left before I sustained bodily injury. Chuck threw his drink at me. Oh, that's a sign of affection. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm serious. He wants you there tomorrow for callbacks. Why, so he could throw his bottle at me? I'm sorry. Chuck drinks a little during rehearsals, but he always cleans up his act for the tapings. Thanks, but uh, to quote a famous loser, no mas. Give me a hint. It's what Roberto Duran said when he lost the title to Sugar Ray Leonard. Which round? The eighth. See, you were born to play this game, Robbie. If you had any idea how many 50-year-old ex-postal workers that I have to sift through on a daily basis, you would understand why I can't let you go. And besides, you're the first contestant that I actually like. Well, when you put it that way, Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Did you have a good day? Great. After work, we drove out to Scarborough Beach. Isn't that where you and Mom used to go all the time? Yeah. Although your mom always stayed in the car when I combed the beach. She didn't like the feeling of sand in her toes. <laughs> so I guess everything's going really well with you and Monica, huh? Oh, she is such a joy. And very good at her job. Oh, I know. I got a chance to watch her at work. Actually, that's how we met. She was doing a piece on a friend of mine at UCLA. Really? Yeah, you know, she has this way of making somebody feel like they're the most special person in the world, <laughs> which is great, as long as no one misinterprets her attention. Does that happen frequently? Oh, I don't know, but it happened to my friend. He fell madly in love with her. Sid, are you afraid I'll misinterpret her attention? Well, I, uh, no. Because... I may be old, but I'm not a fool. I would never presume... Dad, I... I didn't mean you. <laughs> no, of course you didn't. No. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.
back in a week, I'll take out those stitches. Okay. And you stay away from that cat. Hi. Hi. You got an early start. Uh, an emergency. You should have called me. Listen, I thought I would set up out here this morning, capture the waiting room. Can, uh, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Something wrong? Oh, it's my schedule. Uh, without Heather, I've lost track of a few commitments. I completely forgot a zoo board meeting, and uh, I, I have to leave early. Oh, well, that's no problem. I can go with you. They don't uh, allow non-members. Oh, well, um, I guess I can hang here till you get back. Or, you know, we can pick it up tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow's not good either. Uh, my uh, pharmacy rep is going to be here, and it'll kill the whole morning. We can start after 2, if you want. The truth is, it's... Uh, it's going to be a nightmare week, and I think maybe it'd be better if we you know, just call it a day. Call it a day as in project over? You have enough material, I hope. Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of volume, I just had been hoping to stick around for a few days, I, but if it's a bad week... It really is. Well, then, thank you for letting me invade your life. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Good luck with the article. <laughs> Goodbye, Jim. All depends. Am I a free man? Oh, your vitals are good, but before you go home, I need to talk to you. I'm too old for a lecture. Well, not as long as you're still breathing, which in your case is the point. Did you get a chance to think over what we talked about yesterday? I don't need to. What do you want me to do, give up Kim? Well, that's none of my business, but obviously keeping up with her is a risk to your health. Sweetheart, get this doctor off my tail. I promise you I'll be a good boy and take the pills. Hi, Hi. I'm Dr. Hansen. You must be Kim. Oh, gosh, no. I'm Beth. Morris is my grandfather. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just assumed. No, I don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, Dr. Hansen. Yes. Hi. I'm Kim. Kim. Well, of course. The mock cup game is the last turtle. Just stay loose. Now have some fun with Chuck. Fun? What are you kidding? Robbie Hansen from Providence, Rhode Island, home of the famous hen. How you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. You feel lucky today? Yeah, I'm always feeling lucky. You know, that's my big mistake. Sharp kid, what are you doing on this show? Why don't you tell me? Because if I take a guess, I'm bound to be wrong. Rim shot. You're making my job easy, Rob. Thank you. Okay, the category today is big time losers in sports. Which baseball team lost the most World Series? A, the New York Yankees. B, the San Francisco Giants, or C, the L.A. Dodgers? That's easy. C, the Dodgers. Yes, you dodged that one. Chris Everett lost more Grand Slam titles to Martina Navratilova than anyone else. How many times was she whipped by the big girl? A, five times, B, nine times, or C, ten times? All I remember was that it was brutal, so I'm going to go with C again, ten. Right again. You're up a thousand bucks. You can double your money or lose it all. I'm rooting for you, Rob. I love your guts. In 1980, Roberta Duran lost the light heavyweight title to Sugar Ray Leonard. In what round did he say, no mas? A, round three, B, round eight, or C, round nine? Shine for me, Rob. B, round eight. Yes, he shoots, he scores, he wins. Can you hook me up with another, please? Hey, Monica. Sorry to drop by unannounced. I wanted to give you something. The other day, I took some shots of Jim in a classroom, and this shot really jumped out at me. So I made your copy. Oh, you really did capture Dad. Yeah, I thought so. Anyway, I won't be coming by the house anymore. I really wanted you to have it. Oh, uh, you wrapped it up with Dad already? Yeah, I went over there this morning, and he told me he couldn't continue. Did he say why? Previous commitments. Oh. Well, that's a shame. I thought we were really clicking, and he just pulled the plug, sort of out of the blue. 
I guess I, I must have done something that really bothered him. I've just been trying to figure out what it was. Did he say anything to you? No, I mean, uh, just that yesterday was a really good day. I don't want to put you in the middle of this, Sid, but if there is anything I've done to offend him, would you let me know? Of course, sure I would. But I I'm sure it was nothing that you did. It was just dad. <laughs> well, look, let's get together before I go. Oh, great. I'll call you. OK. And thanks for the photo. Sure. You're doing the show on Tuesday. We start you off on the warm-up bench first, and then when the contestant before you bails out, you're on. Yeah, that's great. Listen, I, I don't know what happened with Chuck just now, but it's really weird. Amazing, isn't he? When he wants to, he can turn on the charm. No, no, I meant the no moss thing with Roberto Duran. Now, that was really bizarre, because we were just talking about that last night. Must be in the air. No, movies about hitmen are in the air. You know, lots of things are in the air. But that was a really specific piece of information. I talked to Chuck every day. I may have just said something, and he picked up on it. Oh, Don't worry. You didn't do anything wrong. Besides, Chuck will never remember where I heard it. He's too busy listening to his own demons. Relax. You're going to win big on this show. I'm standing still. Tommy, how's everything? Smooth as silk. Oh, by the way, your dad's here. Where is he? He's at the bar. That's not a good sign. Thanks. Hey, Dad. What are you doing in these neck of the woods? Well, I came down to see how you uh, did on your audition. It went great. Yeah, I'm actually going on the show next week. Hey, congratulations. Thanks. It's nice of you to come by. We've been incredibly busy this week with Sid's friend. What's her name? Monica Lang. Monica, right. So how's that going, anyway? Uh, it's not. Uh, the assignment's finished. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, actually, I cut it off. You bet. Is she as good looking as I hear? Probably more. And you just blew her off? I... I wouldn't characterize it that way. Well, did you at least explain to her why you're cutting it short? No, I didn't. So she has to be pretty confused. <laughs> well, far be it from me to give you advice. But don't you think you might... Owe her an apology. I get you another drink. That always helps. Sid, what's up? Nothing good. Monica came by the clinic today. Dad's not gonna let her finish out the week. He pulled the plug. Oh, that's great. Your conversation with him must have worked. Yeah, I made Dad feel like an old fool, and Monica's gonna have trouble finishing her article. Oh, Johnny, I should have never listened to you in the first place. Oh, that's rich. You're the one that's always saying you can handle these situations better than me. Maybe you just blew it. Hey, maybe we both blew it. <laughs> Okay, so now it's a big mess. What are we gonna do? Well, we need to come clean with Monica. Lay the whole stupid story at her feet and hope she doesn't slam the door in our faces. Our faces? We're in this together, kiddo. Jim. Hi. Hi. I, uh, I thought you were the pizza guy. I guess I should have called first. Um, or maybe I should have made a pit stop at El Forno. <laughs> Come on in. I'm just looking at some proof sheets. Can I get you a glass of wine? 
No, uh, thanks. I just came to apologize for this morning. It wasn't very fair of me to cut you off that way. Thanks. That helps. I was afraid that you were angry with me. No, oh, no. No, of course not. You were wonderful. Really? Why, then? Could I have that glass of wine? That's Monica's building. Sid, do we have to do this? Out. Hold on, Sid. She's got company. Dad? I think I was feeling a little conspicuous. Then, uh, I missed the signals because you didn't seem uncomfortable to me. Thank you. Well, maybe not. Maybe I was, uh... The fact is, I'm afraid I was misinterpreting your attention, and I, uh... What if you weren't? What if I wasn't what? Misinterpreting. What if you were picking up on the fact that I find you attractive? Well, you see, I could... Uh, I could never assume... That? That a woman so young and so very beautiful would be interested. But I am. Is that okay? Yes, it's very okay. I just find it hard to believe. You need a little convincing. 